Well, good morning, YouTube. This is Greg. Thanks for stopping by. I'm on a four-night section of the Florida Trail uh, from Lake City area west uh, with the what I think is probably going to settle down to be my mostly constant uh, gear loadout uh, at a lighter weight. Uh, give me a second. Let me turn this thing around. I'll show you what I've brought to take out in the woods. Okay, here we go. Let me see if I can capture some of this in the morning light. A few years ago, uh, two years ago, I bumped into Will Wood on the internet through his YouTube channel following Redbeard and was introduced to a cottage industry company that's now in Florida and Melbourne called Zpax. And Zpax is probably the central theme with me getting the excess weight out of my gear load. Uh, starting with, uh, this is the Zpax Arc Blast in Cuban fiber at 62 liters. Uh, it has uh, an adjustable carbon fiber frame that in keeping with the name makes a nice arc uh, in the rear of the backpack so that you get air between you and it which goes a really long way in Florida hikes and long sections to keep you comfortable and keep some airflow. See, I think I've hauled everything out of it. This one is uh, the quintessential arc blast with the exception of having two belt pouch and one shoulder strap pouch. So let me show you what I got inside and then I'll show you my shelter stuff. Um, for starters, over here in my kitchen, this is the Tokes uh, 1400 milliliter titanium pot. I'm using the smallest MSR gas bottle and a knockoff of a MSR pocket rocket. I think this one comes from Japan or China. It's nine or ten dollars. Has a little piezo starter. Uh, have a gas lighter just in case. I keep a little scrubby and a pot scraper and the two of them suffice to keep my cooking equipment pretty clean. Uh, not over here, probably in the bottom of my bear bag is my Tokes titanium spoon. Uh, next is a Cedar Summit poncho that is, uh, I had to think about it, it's designed to go over a backpack. I have tried nearly every rain jacket on the market from the outdoor research to the higher end Columbia products. Um, haven't tried the Z-Pax one yet. My favorite is probably the lighter weight offering from North Face with uh, pit zips. It's, uh, I think it's 11 ounces. Uh, House of Ever. In Florida, if you're hiking with that thing, you're either going to be wet from rain getting on you or you'll be wet from perspiring because none of those things breathe like they claim they do. I don't care what Gore-Tex claims. I've never had one in warm weather that didn't leave me wet. Uh, this one does a good job of covering everything and getting uh, some breeze underneath uh, and it's lightweight. Also part of my kitchen, Seat of Summit collapsible cup and collapsible bowl. In the shoulder pouch of my backpack, I keep some bug spray and an REI soft container with a hand sanitizer. For my first aid kit, it's uh, Band-Aids, Moleskin, Ibuprofen, uh, Benadryl. I think there's some Carmex in there and some Jolly Ranchers. For hygiene, uh, another REI soft container with Dr. Bronner's. A folding toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, and gold bond powder. Uh, I guess with hygiene too, I found in, of all places, Walmart, I think they sell them for deer hunters. These are unscented, biodegradable wash towels. I pack them in and pack them out regardless. A package of them doesn't weigh too much. Fits in my other belt pouch on the backpack and I have this aluminum trowel for making a cat hole. 
Uh, this is probably my luxury concession, which is a, a new custom knife by Dogwood Customs and Dan Eastland. It was uh, presented to me as an alternative to my grandfather's 1800s Kepart model from J. Robeson Cutlery in New York. First custom knife I've ever had. This one's interesting in that the scales are photoreactive and glow in the dark. I really don't need a huge knife to go out in the woods with. It's just really nice to have. Uh, for water, I use the quintessential Sawyer Squeeze and, uh, and the bottle that came with it. I filter it with uh, a smart water bottle that stays in one of the pockets of my backpacks. It works well also to back flush it. This is a little micro towel uh, that I got from z -Packs. Comes in a little coin-sized uh, container and I leave it usually clipped to one of my front back pack straps just for wiping my face and keeping things clean. Underneath it, another luxury item is the largest Sea to Summit microfiber pack towel. I use it to dry off my tarp, to dry off stuff, to dry off me. You can, it holds an incredible amount of water and you can squeeze it out and it dries pretty quick just hung out on the back of the backpack. Next are two of the Cuban fiber stuff sacks for my Eno 700 fill down top quilt and under quilt. Uh, next, the Cuban fiber stuff sack for the my 8x10 tarp and some of the extra titanium stakes. Over here for my clothes bag, I guess I would call it also a luxury item. It's, it's Cuban fiber on the outside, but when you turn it inside out, it has a nice fleece section. I use it for a pillow. Inside is my extra pair of uh, pants uh, and a second long pair of pants for sleeping in. The only clothes that I really take besides the uh, two pairs of pants, one for hiking, I'm wearing some shorts now, and one for going to town in. I carry one extra shirt. This is my minus 33 degrees merino wool uh, quarter zip hoodie that I use when it's cold. Um, my wife accuses me of having these for my luxury items. Uh, but what I found, especially approaching the short side of 60, is that uh, if my feet get out of hand, my hikes are really miserable. So for every day that I'm hiking, I have a fresh pair of darn tough wool socks and uh, in Genji toe socks as liners. I have discovered that uh, because I have feet that look kind of like a duck and nearly have opposable toes, uh, my shoes need to have a very generous toe box. The widest ones that I've found are the lightweight Keens, and I get them about a full size, size and a half, too big. Uh, augment the lacing a little bit so they really hug the feet. And with these toe socks as liners and the merino wool darn tufts, I have never had a blister in the last two years of doing long sections. So let's see, over here has my shelter set up for the night. Uh, the outside core of it is a 8 by 10 Cuban fiber tarp by z -Packs that weighs about four ounces. Uh, five and a half with these uh, night eyes, reflective tie-outs for it. Another concession for luxury is uh, this little sit pad. It's kind of like the, the Z-Lite uh, from Thermarest. Uh, I don't know how much it weighs, but it fits easily in one of my pockets, and these things just come in handy for sitting on and leaving your shoes on and those kinds of things. Uh, let's see, what else? For the suspension system, I have switched from the uh, 
ENO Atlas straps to their Helio system, which is Dyneema and Amsteel. Uh, these weigh about four ounces. I had previously had uh, the Sub-7 ENO hammock, and it only weighs four ounces. And it weighs four ounces for a reason, and that is that it's really small and tippy and doesn't cover well. So I switched to the ENO Technas that weighs 10 ounces. Uh, and with that and the Helio system suspension, I'm still with the hammock and the tarp and the suspension system right at one pound and two ounces. Uh, also included in that weight is some Kevlar cordage. I had used some old, I don't know what to call this stuff. We used to make traps out of it when I was a kid. Uh, it's kind of tarred, thin cordage. Uh, I think maybe I've heard it called bank line. I've attached a toggle to it on a Prusik knot so that I can slide it back and forth to hold the tarp where I want it to to stay. Uh, and I like the Kevlar cordage because it just doesn't weigh a whole lot. The entire sleep system, including the 700 fill down uh, top quilt and under quilt uh, at about 22 ounces. Let's see, that's 44 and one pound, so 18 ounces for the tarp hammock and suspension keeps me under four pounds uh, for everything. Another luxury item, a Walmart flashlight. And underneath, I found this little guy that's come in really handy, also by ENO. It's a gear hammock, and I cut off some of the cordage and augmented it so that I could use my existing suspension system to connect it underneath. Uh, the nice part about this is that when it's raining or not, uh, I can throw my backpack in it and my shoes so they stay off the ground and creatures can't get in them as much uh, with this little gear under hammock. Uh, I don't remember what it weighs. Uh, I think about 10 ounces with the carabiners and things that I have attached to it. The long and short of... This new arrangement for me is that my pack weight, uh, with everything except food and water, is now at about nine pounds, which is a big deal for me. Uh, I think the only thing I left out, this is my uh, bear bag, again by Z-Packs. I have a spool tool and some Dyneema Am Steel and a little Z-Packs pouch with a rock in it that I use to uh, hang my food at night. So, finally, I don't, except that it took me this many years to figure out how to knock that much weight out of my system. Um, but with a combination of stuff sacks and tarps and backpacks and stuff from Z-Pack, it really enables me to get the weight out of my hiking system so that at the end of the day, I have a much more comfortable hike and tacking on 12 to 15 miles doesn't leave me exhausted at the end of the day as when I had a pack weight of almost 20 pounds. Uh, so uh, this is my latest update and my adventure into getting the weight out of my gear loadout. Thanks for stopping by. Check in again. Thanks.